Hi guys, welcome back to uh, Gaza's Koi Pond. Reason for today's video, so we can fit some new float valves. The reason behind fitting the new float valves is my dad's had a bit of an issue on his pond. No losses, but this could have been an absolute disaster. He uh, had a slight blockage on his filter system, so his pump pumped away and it's basically overflowed. All the water's gone to waste instead of returning back to the pond and it's lost 8 to 12 inches of water in the space of 20 minutes. He was lucky, he was still at home doing a bit of gardening, came back into his back garden where his pond is to find that it was you know overflowing, switched his system off, corrected the issue but this is to prevent it from happening to him again and obviously from happening to me in my pond. So what we've decided to do is to fit a couple of float valves Float valves basically just a switch that switches off your pump when the level of your water drops. And uh, it's just a little video just to perhaps maybe help everybody out that might be having a similar sort of thing or has had the similar sort of thing happen in the past and uh, wants to see how I've done mine and how they could do a similar thing themselves or buy some similar sort of stuff to do the similar sort of thing. So I'm going to take you to a quick overview of all the equipment, the parts that I bought, where I got mine from, what tools you're going to need to do it. So. Right, let's get to it. Right there you go. So this is basically a breakdown of everything we need. Oh, I'm going to need to do what I'm doing. There you go. There's the uh, Clark float switch with two meter cable, part number 79508286. Picked up and purchased from Machine Mart. We got two of them, as you can see there, £23.95 for the two. That's basically the float switch. This lays on the surface of your water. I granted it's a little bit unsightly, but if you saved all your you know your fish, it's a good idea. Has a little ball bearing inside. Basically it would be laid on your pond like that as the ball bearing as your pond drops or starts to pump itself out or you know a leak or anything like that, the ball bearing you know the float drops and the ball bearing switches inside and switches your pump off. As you can hear. That opens and closes the circuit. So we've got the float, the float valve. We have a two meter cable and that now is into a waterproof junction box which I got from Tool Station and was a total of £6.98. Then the last thing you'll need will be a connection block I had one of these lying around in the house, but I'm sure you could pick up one of these from any, you know, DIY shop, b and other places are available, whatever. Um, but that's the, the model number there, the Clark's float switch model number, PFS-1, part number 79508286. And like I say, I got mine from Machine Mart, and I got the float box, uh, sorry, the uh, junction box from tool station. You can pick them up anywhere, but that's just where I got mine from. Right, tools. Spirit level for levelling up your fault box so you uh, it's nice, neat and tidy. Pair of snips, cutting your cable, stripping your cables back. Posi screwdriver, or the old posi screws there, to attach that to the fence panel. Flat head screwdriver, or your connection block. And a silicon I'm using clear multi-purpose silicon mastic gun just basically when I put the screws in there I'm just going to put a blob of silicon just into those two little caps there because I don't want anything running down the back of the fence panel hitting those screws and seeping its way in I want it to be 100% waterproof watertight these each one of these little connections has just bear with me a second, has a little rubber seal so you put your cable in there you clamp these in by screwing them in, it pushes these little lugs out, like you see there, the little lugs there. So you could have any number of cables coming through these, but they come with three connected uh, clamps as a standard for the one that I purchased. So you can have your pond cable from your pump through this one, your pond cable or pump cable, should I say, from your plug side 
coming through this one. So you're basically you're going to get your pump cable cut it in half, close to your pond obviously because you've only got this cable which is two meters so you want it close to your pond as you can where you if you you know your pump's in submerged in your pond like mine is. So cut your cable in half and then you're going to fed one end through there and the opposite end through there and at the end of it you'll tighten this back on which will tighten up that little grub screw as I've done with this one already. It's not tight, it's just loose at the moment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wire it in as, as this is. Right? The blue cable there is a five connection block. This is a reason for them being five. The blue one that you can see there is used for nothing at all. It's not needed for what we're doing or for the purpose of this installation. Couple of posy screws, like I said. So we've got a little bit of a diagram. You're going to cut your pond, uh, pump cable in half, strip it back like that, and then strip back your copper, sorry, your plastic, so you're exposing your copper and twisting the two green and yellow cables together. And they're going to go into part one, this one. And you're going to do the same with your blue cables and they're going to go twisted together and go into port two. You're then going to get the two brown cables but not twisting those together. I will show you all this afterwards when it's all wired in. And then you're going to put your first brown cable, doesn't matter which order you put them in, into the number three and then into number four. Number five, just tighten that down, clamp it all the way down. I need to do mine as of yet. Well, mine's actually clamping down on the cable that's on there. Let's see if we can get that to focus. It's heat shrunk wrapped around on the inside, so there's no cable exposed inside there. And it's nipped up on the inside of that one too. And then the black goes to number four. The brown goes to number three, which is number four, sorry, number four and number three. Number five is only used for the blue cable in as an isolation, just to keep it out of the way, just so it's not you know a loose cable hanging around inside this junction box, so you don't ever get yourself uh, in any kind of trouble or any bother when you're putting this in. You don't want to have any loose cables just lying around, so it's just tucked in there out of the way. So that's what I've got. That's the equipment that I'm going to need. The junction box is going to go onto my fence panel. And then I'm going to pull my other two cables from my pump when I've cut them and spurred them back, pass them back into through here into this, and then we're going to connect them on, as I said, again, two greens twisted together into number one, two blues twisted together into number two, first brown wire into number three, second brown wire into number four. Nothing goes into number five, and nothing goes into number one on the opposite side and number two on the opposite side. So those can be wound down, nipped up, not needed. So the pump side and the plug side of the pump cable is all getting wired into these four there. So one, green and yellow twisted together, two, two blues twisted together, three, first brown wire, four, second brown wire. Right, here we are then. Two greens, two blues, brown, brown, brown across from it, then the black, and the blue redundant. Spirit level on. Just going to pop a little bit of uh, silicon over those screw heads. And then we'll get it closed up. And then, as you can see, at present it's just there on the top of my netting. And I'm going to just thread it underneath those stones. It's had a little rock right there, so it just comes out and sits on top of water surface there. Right, so here we are now then. All installed and fitted, closed up. A couple of cable pins to all those in place, keep it nice and tidy, water tight. Now it runs down behind there, cables that are underneath, behind all the rocks, comes out there and just lays on top of the surface. Now should that pond drop below I reckon about five inch. Then the pump will shut off. And we won't be having all that getting pumped straight out and moving anymore. We've still got a pond there, you can just see water breaking surface there. We've still got a pump in which just circulates the uh, 
pond water and then we've got the two oxygenators on either side to keep the pond oxygenated so the fish will still have water circulation and they'll still have oxygen but they won't be uh, subjected to a pond that's pumped completely empty there you go all done and fitted nice neat safe and watertight cheers guys thanks for watching see you on the next one